How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about the problems that have presented on this Jeep Wrangler. It's a 2012 um, model and it's got the 3.6 litre engine in it. A couple of fault codes that kept reoccurring was P0302 which is cylinder 2 misfire and P0128 which was related to the thermostat and coolant flow side of it. Now this had been in a number of workshops before it reached us and I'm going to share with you the backstory on the other workshops and where I'm actually up to right now with this vehicle. <laughs> Okay, so in the other workshops that it went to, you can see to the left hand side here, it's got new ignition coils. It's got new ignition coils all around. It's also got new spark plugs all around as well. That is where primarily the focus resided in, a misfire that kept coming back, but the performance on this vehicle was extremely good. There wasn't a loss of performance at all, and um, the uh, drivability was absolutely fine. I have confirmed that when driving it myself, I have found that there was no issues in drivability uh, over a long period of time because we have tested this one out. The second fault code, which was P0128, got slipped under the radar and didn't actually get followed up enough on. The coolant um, came out the overflow and we were able to uh, rectify that problem quite quickly. It was related to the thermostat housing, which is down on the front side here that thermostat was stuck open and also the heater core which is back here was um, heavily clogged so let's say 75% clogged which was restricting the flow by doing a coolant um, pressurized flush on this heater core and new thermostat housing down here that fault has now been rectified the, co the fault codes not returned and therefore that problem is now gone um, in the diagnostic approach it was eliminate one fault at a time decided to go for the coolant side first of all because i don't want to have a vehicle that's overheating or a coolant restriction of any kind um, with a fault code like that so that's why we focused in on that and we're able to rectify it now back to the p0302 how can we diagnose a fault like that it hasn't got a misfire that we can actually feel when it's driving it seems absolutely fine the fall code is taking about 150 to 200 kilometers before it comes back on what do we do in them instances to try and find the problem well i did hear quite a long time ago if you have a vehicle that tends to be running okay drivability wise but on idle you can feel a little bit that it can be a mechanical misfire. That is something that was taught to me many years ago and it is how I approached this fault straight away. So the fact that I was having a slight idle issue wasn't all the time, was intermittent, but I could feel it dipping the odd time and it was not throwing up anything on the misfire counter as well. That's another thing I looked into. I had the misfire counter on cylinder two and it never detected it on that. So it did have to do a certain amount of cycles and a certain amount of road before it would throw the code back. But again, back to listening to the engine, first of all, I could feel a little dip off at times. And when you drive it normally, it would be fine. All through the ranges was fine. I thought to myself, this is a mechanical issue on cylinder number two. What can cause something like that? A sticking valve or a valve spring that's broken or a rocker arm, something like that can cause it. But how can we confirm that we have an issue there, especially when it seems to be intermittent? Very good, fast and effective way is doing a relative compression test. A relative compression test like this is very, very useful in these cases. We're able to see when cranking if there's any issue on cylinder two. I have put a sink here on cylinder number one so the um, signal wire going into the ignition coil i have that on my um on one channel on my scope and then the amp clamp on the other side i have set up so that i can see what it's doing the reason why i use a relative compression test on this jeep is quite simple 
it's a non-intrusive test and it gives you a good picture as to how the engine is performing mechanically. It's going to give you a waveform of the balance of the engine. It measures the current that's coming through the starter motor through that amp clamp that I have hooked up. And what I'm looking for is a differential in the waveform. So what I'm expecting to see is an unevenness in the peaks. So you're going to have a peak, a dip, a peak, a dip. And a nice performing engine with similar comp compression is going to have the same type of peaks. What happens is you get up and then you get a lower one. You might get up again and a lower one depending on what the compression is showing on that engine. How easy it is to turn it over and how much current is being drawn as it's being turned over as the engine is cranking. So the only things I need to do in preparation for this is make sure the fuel is disabled. That's as simple as taking out a fuse, a relay, or if your vehicle has that clear flood mode, which you can press the accelerator a number of times and then just turn it over and get that waveform. So flood mode, here we go. And then crank. Go back. Now that I have confirmation from the relative compression test that there is an issue, I can see the waveform isn't evenly matched, I can see the pattern isn't as expected, I decided to do a compression test right across the six cylinders. Now what I find on the compression test is the readings on both the right bank and the left bank have a cylinder that has low compression. The lowest compression is on cylinder and number two, which is what I expected, but I also find that the right-hand bank has low compression as well at 108. So we don't have an evenly balanced um, engine on either the right bank or the left bank. What I decide to do is go straight for number two and I carry out what's called a cylinder leak down test. The reason you do a leak down test is to see whether you have a valve issue on the exhaust or on the intake valves or potentially a head gasket issue or um, going past the piston. So the piston rings, whether it's letting uh, compression loss bypass down there. It's a very, very effective test and the only thing you have to do is get the piston up to top dead center before you start the test set the gauge up, you're gonna need a compressed air and one of the testers uh, available to you, but the results I get are as follows in the images you're gonna see. So what you see here, first of all, is the intake. I decided to drop a little bit of water down into, so it just shows you visibly exactly how bad the leak is. All those bubbles that you're seeing there is air pushing past those intake valves. I go to the exhaust, which does have a hole in the muffler, and I can hear the air rushing out there. So I now know that the valves are not seating correctly on this cylinder, which is why we have a compression loss. Now, that is a pretty um, damning report for the customer to hear because this isn't going to be very simple or straightforward to fix. And I do up all of the information for the customer uh, based on the report I had done to this point. Now with that information, I gave it to the customer. The customer decided they did not want to go any further with it at this point. The engine was running relatively okay. They were unsure if they were going to keep it for a very long period of time and they didn't want to necessarily spend a lot of money stripping both banks. 
it wasn't really something that you'd only go in and do the left bank on when you see the right hand bank also having low compression as well chances are if we went and investigated that further if the customer wanted us to we're going to see some valve issues on that side i did find some information as well a bit later on that these cylinder heads on these vehicles can warp can misshape not seat the valves correctly over time and um, i don't know if that's a manufacturing fault or if anybody has any more information on that but i did find that there was a recall on these particular engines for that type of fault now of course it needed some deeper diving to confirm whether that was the case or not but as i said the customer decided to pull it at that one but we were able to find the fault we were able to share that information with the customer and we were able to skip the process that the other workshops had failed to do by isolating the faults by first fixing the coolant problem and having that rectified so there's nothing coming out the overflow we have no um, bubbling or gurgling coming through the cabin which was also a fault that was noted and that we have proper heat function and that was able to get rid of that p um, 0128 thermostat rationality code we were able to get rid of that and we we're able to just focus on that cylinder too a bit deeper diving and we were able to confirm to the customer that it needed a major repair and that is it for this video guys i really hope you found it useful and informative maybe some steps in this video that can help you diagnose a fault that you have on your vehicle or something that you can consider on the next one that comes into your workshop really hope you enjoyed this video hope you found it useful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching